A very good morning to Dr. Fadil and my fellow classmates. I'm Satish Roganadan. Um, matrix number would be 213533. Um, me and my group mates are going to talk about fish culture. Just give a couple um, in, in information on it. So fish culture is a process of raising fishes in an enclosed area for commercial purposes. Many countries have started this fish culture for an alternative as an alternative source of seafood. <clears throat> for example, China has the, had the highest aquaculture seafood uh, production which was 63.7 metric uh, tons in 2018 followed by in Indonesia which was 16.6 metric uh, tons. And as you can see, the the values gradually I increase. So there are a certain criteria to look into before starting a fish culture. Firstly, fishes should have a high growth rate in a short period of uh, time and should be acceptable to supplementary diets. For example, pellets, which are widely um, used in fish cul culturing. They should be hardy enough to resist some common diseases and infections of parasites because this issue would only incur cost and at the same time the fish culture would not be successful. And there are four types of fish culture which are monoculture, uh, polyculture, monosex culture and polysex culture. So when we talk about monoculture, it's basically raising only one type of species of fishes and monosex culture is raising either a male or a female uh, fish species. It is practiced for maintaining breeding male and female fishes. At the same time, <coughs> uh, polyculture is, uh, is culturing two or more uh, species of fishes in the in um, in the same water in the same water body as in you mix two different species and polysex culture is is roughly the same thing where it's either a male or a, a female or two or more species is read in the same tank or the same uh, body of water so that's all from me I'll pass it over to the next uh, uh, group mate thank you hi my name is Aisha Farhani Binti Chemoy and I'm going to present about broodstock. Broodstock, or we call it as brood fish, they are the ferret fish from fry and finger limb that are produced from them. So, uh, the success of stocking program, fish farm, and aquaculture industry depend upon a reliable supply of healthy fry or finger limbs that have a sound genetic base from broodstock. So, the broodstock is a group of sexually matured female and male fish and they are separate for breeding purpose. For the stocking density, uh, the broodstock considered to be 4 until 5 times per hectare and also male and female. Male and female can be maintained at the ratio of 3 to 4 females to 6 to seven males, uh, either separately or together. And for the advantage of the maintaining a broodstock, eggs and fry can be produced in a controlled environment with no reliance on wild populations. For example, broodstock reconditioning, uh, we use tilapia. Tilapia spawn here around under suitable environmental condition and they occur after 3 to 4 months of continuous spawning and men and females uh, they should be removed from the breeding system and stock separately for a period of time and after that uh, it will improve seed productivity and also can synchronize spawning and a more aggressive approach to broodstock stock with 2 or 3 female group they are rotated at 5 to 10 day intervals and then the each female group uh, they is rested without males at a high density uh, which is 18 to 80 to 20 fish per square meter in a separate condition hapa and after that uh, the rootstock uh, they will feed high quality feed after a spawning opportunity of five to seven day and it will improve the seed productivity as well as spawning synchronies Assalamualaikum, my name is Muhammad Shah Naim bin Ahmad Shahril with number matrix 212345 
So how to take care of fish larvae in fish culture? Normally fish larvae in fiber culture in fiber tank or glass tank that not so big and too deep because it easy to handle. Diet fish larvae has small mouth. They can only consume small small size of food less than 1 mm of food suitable for the larvae based on the species. Usually farmers use like use live food like rotifer, atemia and copepod for sea bass, grouper and tilapia larvae. Like nanochloropsis usually for herbivore species like grass carp and Chinese carp. Farmers also use formulated micro pellet and also use micro and capsulated egg base. Requirements the protein for the food above 35% of protein to increase their growth. Precaution in water change activity require to use filter to avoid larvae suck into the siphon. Water movement from aeration must not too big so that larvae not fatigue to swim by the water current. Thank you. Uh, my name is Nanisha Binti Yustri. My metric number is 211525. Today I would like to talk about grow out. Uh, grow out is usually the last and the longest production phase in aquaculture based on the fish that we take care of. Uh, they are four method uh, sorry four factors that affect the grow out the first one is feeding uh, we are as a farmer we must give a food follow the time and give uh, feed uh, feed the fish according to the weight of the fish uh, the second one is stocking uh, in pond or tank there are no we must put not too much fish uh, not overcrowded so if uh, too much fish in the tank or pond uh, fish will not uh, get enough uh, oxygen the third one is handling handling is important uh, while we do harvesting uh, we must do it quickly to prevent the fish uh, from the stress the last one is water quality uh, example from water quality is pH, TO, turbidity. We must take care of three of these uh, in the optimum level. Uh, example, such example that I give you here is tilapia fish. Uh, tilapia can can proper growth condition uh, that will take time for until six months. Uh, tilapia also grow well well at high density uh, in the confinement pond or tanks. When we maintaining the good water quality, as I mentioned just now, okay. But the next slide is an example of uh, harvesting in cage culture. Here we can see uh, we must make sure the fish is healthy or not, uh, no sickness in the fish, and we the fish must reach the target market. So if the fish healthy, no sickness, uh, the fish is grow well and reach the grow out grow up face. That's all from me. Thank you. Assalamualaikum. Yeah, I'm Muhammad Zain. So, what is it? 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 Okay, reading ni dia terdapat tiga jenis atau tiga cara untuk pembiakan. Okay, first, pembiakan secara sebelah jadi. Okay, yang kedua, pembiakan separa sebelah jadi. Dan ketiga pula, pembiakan secara buatan. Okay, kita akan pergi ke pembiakan secara sebelah jadi. Okay. Pembiakan secara semula jadi uh, ikan jantan dan betina akan ditempatkan di dalam kawasan yang sama untuk pembiakan. Okey. Mana kata? Pembiakan secara separa semula jadi. Ikan betina akan diberikan sukan kimia 
untuk induce follow dan kedua-dua ikan jantan dan betina akan diletakkan bersama di kawasan perbiakan ok masuk ke pembiakan uh, buatan ok pembiakan buatan ni berbeza sedikit ok ikan betina akan diberikan sebutkan sebanyak sekali atau dua kali untuk menghasilkan telur apabila telur sudah batang ia akan dilepaskan oleh betina Okey, dan masih yang sama juga ikan jantan juga uh, biasanya akan disetik uh, dan telur uh, disenyawa secara buatan dengan, se- dengan sperma yang dipoli dari pada jantan dan dibesarkan dalam keadaan yang tawar 